Poems Every Child Should Know, edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 16. Read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains the following poems. In Gratitude, The Ivy Green, The Noble Nature, and The Flying Squirrel. Part 2 continued. In Gratitude. In Gratitude by William Shakespeare, 1564 to 1616, is an incisive thrust at a refined vice. It is a part of education to learn to be grateful. Blow, blow, thou winter wind, thou art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. Thy tooth is not so keen, because thou art not seen, although thy breath be rude. Freeze, freeze, thou bitter sky, thou dost not bite so nigh as benefits forgot. Though thou the waters warp, thy sting is not so sharp, as friend remembered not. William Shakespeare The Ivy Green The Ivy Green by Charles Dickens, 1812-1870, is a hardy poem in honour of a hardy plant. There is a wonderful ivy growing at Rudlan in northern Wales. Its roots are so large and strong that they form a comfortable seat for many persons, and no one can remember when they were smaller. This ivy envelops a great castle in ruins. Every child in that locality loves the old ivy. It is typical of the ivy as seen all through Wales and England. Oh, a dainty plant is the ivy green, that creepeth o'er ruins old. Of right choice food are his meals, I ween, in his cell so lone and cold. The walls must be crumbled, the stones decayed, to pleasure his dainty whim, and the mouldering dust that years have made is a merry meal for him. Creeping where no life is seen, a rare old plant is the ivy green. Fast he stealeth on, though he wears no wings, and a staunch old heart has he, how closely he twineth, how tight he clings, to his friend, the huge oak-tree. And slyly he traileth along the ground, and his leaves he gently waves, and he joyously twines and hugs around the rich mould of dead men's graves. Creeping where no life is seen, a rare old plant is the ivy green. Whole ages have fled, and their works decayed, and nations have scattered been, but the stout old ivy shall never fade from its hale and hearty green. The brave old plant in its lonely days shall fatten upon the past, for the stateliest building man can raise is the ivy's food at last. Creeping where no life is seen, a rare old plant is the ivy green. Charles Dickens The Noble Nature the Noble Nature by Ben Jonson, 1574 to 1637, needs no plea. A small virtue, well polished, is better than none. It is not growing like a tree, in bulk doth make man better be, or standing long an oak three hundred year to fall a log at last, dry, bald, and sere. A lily of a day is fairer far in May, although it fall and die that night. It was the plant and flower of light. In small proportions we just beauties see, and in short measures life may perfect be. Ben Jonson The Flying Squirrel The Flying Squirrel is an honest account of a live creature that won his way into scores of hearts by his mad pranks and affectionate ways. It is enough that John Burroughs has commended the poem. Of all the woodland creatures, the quaintest little sprite, is the dainty flying squirrel in vest of shining white, in coat of silver grey, and vest of shining white. His furry Quaker jacket is trimmed with stripe of black, a furry plume to match it is curling o'er his back, new curved with every motion his plume curls o'er his back. No little newborn baby has pinker feet than he, each tiny toe is cushioned with velvet cushions three, three wee pink velvet cushions, almost too small to see. Who said the foot of baby might tempt an angel's kiss? 
I know a score of schoolboys who put their lips to this, this wee foot of the squirrel, and left a loving kiss. The tiny thief has hidden my candy and my plum. Ah, there he comes unbidden to gently nip my thumb. Down in his home, my pocket, he gently nips my thumb. How strange the food he covets, the restless, restless white. Fred's old stuffed armadillo he found a tempting bite. Fred's old stuffed armadillo, with ears a perfect fright. The Lady Ruth's great bureau, each foot a dragon's paw. The midget ate the nails from his famous antique claw. Oh, what a cruel beastie to hurt a dragon's claw! Two autographic copies upon my choicest shelf. To every dainty volume the rogue has helped himself. My books, oh dear, no matter. The rogue has helped himself. And yet, my little squirrel, your taste is not so bad. You've swallowed cared completely, and psychologic lad. Rosmini you've digested, and Kant in rags you've clad. Gnaw on, my elfish rodent, lay all the sages low. My pretty lace and ribbons, they're yours for weal or woe. My pocket-book's in tatters, because you like it so. Mary E. Burt End of section 16. Read by Kara Schallenberg on October 16, 2006, in Oceanside, California.